It's day four of Fresh Hill. We're here at the Froig. It's amazing. The sun is shining. It's early, but the music's already on. There are people here. We're going to chat to the distillery manager, John. And yeah, super excited for an amazing day. Awesome. So our first question for you today comes from a guy called Lavi Wee on Instagram. Um, they just want to know, like, what's your favourite kind of whiskey to drink? Okay, Lavi, that's a tough one. It just depends on the circumstances. So, social, 10-year-old, sometimes oh, it could be anything. It could be anything. It's a mood thing, I would say. Like, last night, I just wanted a kind of quiet whiskey, so I had a Bucladi 12. Uh, no, but I haven't 12, sorry. <laughs> Can't even get my distilleries right. So, but it just, like, just, it's just a lovely, lovely whiskey. So, it, it's a mood thing. Sometimes I like playing level 18 if I'm feeling a wee bit kind of indulgent. All over. I just love all Scotch whiskey and I'm interested in all Scotch whiskey. But Laphroaig's a favourite, obviously. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, the next question is from an account called Laviwe on Instagram. Um, they want to know what makes Laphroaig stand out compared to other Isla whiskies. Okay, uh, I think there's a couple of things that makes Laphroaig stand out from other Isla whiskies. And we've got the floor maltings, you can hear the fans going behind us there. That'll allow us to produce just a different smoke flavoured profile than other Isla distilleries. And then the stills, the, just the way we distill. The fact that it's an unbalanced distillation, which is quite rare within the Scotch whisky industry, unless you're triple distillation. So these two factors and the fact that we'll mature a lot on Isla as well, go to making Laphroaig slightly different to all the other whiskies. So the next question is from an account called M Young M. I might not be pronouncing that right. Um, they want to know what your favourite Laphroaig is. They like the Anchor and Moor? Yeah, no, so they all, that's, that's, the, the Anchor and Moor's got a lot of virgin European oak in it, so they like the spice, kind of rye style type whiskey. Uh, my favourite's the 10, it's the family recipe, it's my main job to make sure that it's consistent from batch to batch, so that'll be my focus and I just think because it's the family recipe it's just special. Our next question's from a guy called Chris Molisanti, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong Chris, um, they want to know which is the smokiest Laphroaig? Well, believe it or not, they're all equally smoky. We only make one type of new spirit, Laphroaig, it's the one smokiness. But what happens is with different ages and different cask types, and the more cask types Laphroaig new spirit sees, it'll become, the other flavours come up. So the, the one that will feel the smokiest would probably be the 10-year cask strength, because it's kind of full power, raw Laphroaig. And the last question was actually from quite a few people. They wanted to know, where's your favourite place to drink whiskey, and do you have a favourite whiskey bar? That's a really tough question. It depends on circumstances. It depends on the occasion. If it's a social occasion, you'll want quite a big whiskey bar. Uh, mood comes into that too. Probably a, a good place for me would be somewhere like Delilah's in Chicago. Uh, I, kinda, I like a kind of heavier type of music, so that and whiskey mix well with me. Uh, Baxter Inn in Sydney is another great place just for the back bar. Uh, and a favourite place is probably still my house Yes. and just a few friends around crack open a bottle of 10 year old and see where the evening goes can't beat it, yeah. just get home with friends yep. thanks so much John, that's great no you're welcome, thank you